Think about the last time someone handed you a red juicy apple. You reached out for it, you took a bite, and you probably experienced a tart flavor. During those moments, neurons were firing in your brain to produce your movements and to create all your sensations of the apple, like its red color with a blush of green, the smoothness of it against your hand, the crisp floral scent, the audible crunch when you bite into it, and its tangy taste with a hint of sweetness. Now here is the very cool thing. Just now, when I said the word apple, your brain responded to a certain extent as if an apple were actually present. That is, your brain combined bits and pieces of previous apples that you've seen and tasted. This is called simulation. If you had a real apple in your hand, this simulation of the feel and smell and taste of the apple will happen in the moment before you bite the apple. So basically your neurons in the visual parts of your brain and in the parts that code for taste and so on start to fire in advance of you actually biting into the apple. Using past experience, your brain predicts what your experience will be like. As information arrives from your taste buds, your brain compares it to the simulation. If the real apple turns out to be a little sweeter than your brain predicted, your brain might adjust its simulation so that you taste that sweetness, that unexpected sweetness. But your brain might also just ignore the difference so that you don't notice it. The apple example is no different from what you're doing right now. You might think that you're sitting and listening to me speak, reacting to my words, but in fact your brain is using its past experience to predict every single word that I say. Now let's apply this logic to emotion. Suppose you're walking alone in the forest and you hear some rustling of leaves. As always, your brain will launch predictions. In this example, your brain will predict that there is a snake nearby. It begins to simulate the sights and sounds of a snake and prepares your body for action, say, to run. These predictions translate into feeling. For example, your heart rate goes up and maybe you begin to breathe more deeply and you might feel agitated. So what happens next? Well, there are three possibilities. Maybe the snake slithers out from the bush. The sensory input matches your prediction, and so you run. Fear becomes your brain's best guess for what just caused those sensations based on your past experience that is the last time you were walking in the forest. But maybe no snake is present. Maybe the leaves were just rustling because of the wind. In this case, your brain might correct its prediction, and you won't see the snake. But because of your original simulation, you'll still feel agitated. And you'll make sense of that feeling in some other way. Here's the really strange part. It's even possible that when there's no snake present, you will see one anyway. It's similar to experiencing an optical illusion like this one. There is no white square in this picture, but your brain is simulating one so you actually see it.